Hi, so my name is Philip Moriarty. I'm a professor of physics. My research area is basically the science of the ultra-small, uh, looking at individual atoms, individual molecules, measuring their properties, doing spectroscopy on them, moving them around. And ultimately, what I want to be able to do is do computer control of uh, matter to be able to take individual atoms and build them up to a predefined blueprint to form a, a structure that we've predetermined. Okay, so the object I'm don donating is this rather innocuous looking thing and this rather innocuous looking co container. What this is, is a tiny, tiny tuning fork. In every quartz watch and every quartz clock, the, ch the timing element that keeps time is, is a tuning fork just like this. We take the tuning fork out of the can when it's inside the clock and we stick a tiny, tiny tip on the end. And in fact, that tip is atomically sharp. And we bring that tip close into the surface and then we measure the changes in the oscillation frequency. You measure changes in the oscillations, basically, of the tuning fork to which we've glued the tip. And by measuring those oscillations, we can tell the forces between this single atom right at the end of the tip and a single atom at, in the sample. So why I want to donate this object is that the work of the entire research group is based upon this. Um, it allows us to measure those tiny, tiny interatomic forces and intermolecular forces. Um, and it also allows us to manipulate matter and uh, the tuning fork I'm actually donating this actual thing was involved in atomic manipulation experiments. This tuning fork in particular is a place in my heart because it was at sort of four o'clock in the morning when suddenly those experiments worked and that paved the way for a range of different um, experiments we've been doing over the past couple of years and will continue to do for many years into the future. So what would people think of this? Two centuries hence, well, it's, I guess the best way to think about that is if we think about two, technology from 200 years ago, well, existence of atoms wasn't even, you know, uh, accepted. Um, and now we're at the point where we can not only see atoms, we can manipulate them. It's really, really um, amazing to think where this could lead us. I'd like to think that in 200 years' time, we will have a technology whereby for certain materials, we can pick and place those atoms and build up not just a, a tiny nanostructure, but a macroscopic product. And instead of having just one of these working at a time, have thousands, millions of them working at a time, that's where I hope we'll be. Do I feel like a drop in the ocean? Yeah, I feel like a drop in the ocean all the time. Um, but the great thing about science is you're part of a community. And um, what you hope is that, you know, you, what you're doing, your little contribution over here, it's about standing on the shoulders of giants and trying to claw up on top of the shoulders of giants. I think what's great about science are those interactions, that sense of community, the fact that some little perturbation over here, something that seems very, very off the wall and doesn't seem to be of any use to anybody, 50 years hence could be of extreme importance. So in one sense, yeah, I feel like I'm a drop in the ocean, but I feel like I'm very connected to that ocean and ripples that we make in the group here might be able to propagate over quite long distances. So in terms of scientific advancements, the, the big question is, what is really the nature of quantum mechanics? We've had this long-standing debate. Is an electron a particle? Is it a wave? Well, we know sometimes it behaves like a particle, sometimes it behaves like a wave. But we still don't, after 100 years, have a good, solid understanding of really what quantum mechanics is all about. And I hope this is sorted out 100 years hence. I think my proudest achievement, if I'm brutally honest, um, is the or are the students, the PhD students who've come out of the group and also the, actually the undergraduate students I've taught. If I can make a difference in the, the sort of what they do and if I can make a difference in terms of how they think, actually I think that's what I'm most proud of. I, it's difficult for me to pick, to, pick a, a sort of scientific breakthrough as such that matches that. I think the fact that you're, you're making a difference in undergraduates and postgraduates lives that's certainly what I consider my greatest achievement. My question really for somebody in my field a couple of centuries from now is what do you think the ultimate limits are in our ability to manipulate matter um, on a technological level? Can we, can we get beyond um, current technology which is uh, to do with transferring electrons around? controlling charge states, we're also thinking about spin. Basically, what are the limits? What are the limits that, as you see it in terms of um, where technology can go and what, what is the physics and chemistry underpinning those fundamental limits? Yeah, it's, well, aesthetically, it looks um, good and sturdy, last a few centuries.
Um, yeah, it's a great idea.